thought it'd be kind of interesting to let Mama hold the Bible. For a lot of years, she had a Bible just like this, and had she wanted to feel the familiarity of holding the Bible. Feel that, Mama? Isn't that nice? Isn't it nice to feel the Bible like you did when I was in college and all? And you read the Bible every day. Let me help you sit up. One, two, three, hip. There. Now then, you got the Bible in your hands there. You can't read it, so I'll read it for you, all right? Let me read it for you. I'll read you the Bible. Okay, we're on chapter 40 of Ezekiel. There's only 48 chapters. I started reading with Mom about a year and a half ago. And we'll just keep going here. In the 5 and 20th year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was smitten, in the selfsame day the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. And the visions of God brought me he me into the land of Israel, and set me upon a very high mountain, by which was a, the frame, which was as the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass, with a line of flax in his hands, and a measuring reed. And he stood in the gate, and the man said unto me, Son of man, behold, with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears, and set thine heart upon all that I will shew thee. For to the intent that I might shew them unto thee, to the intent that I might shew them unto thee, art thou brought hither. Declare all that thou seest in the house of Israel. And behold, a wall on the outside of the house round about, and in the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long, six cubits long by the cubit, and a hand breadth. So he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then came he unto the gate, which looketh toward the, the east, and went up the stairs thereof, and measured the threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad, and the other threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad. And every little chamber was one reed long, and one reed broad. And between the little chambers were five cubits, and the threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate within was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate within one reed. Then measured he the porch of the gate eight cubits, and the posts thereof two cubits, and the porch of the gate was inward. And the little chambers of the gate eastward were three on this side, and three on that side. They three were of one measure, and the posts had one measure on this side and on that side. And he measured the breadth of the entry of the gate ten cubits, and the length of the gate thirteen cubits. The space also before the little chambers was one cubit on this side, and the space was one cubit on that side, and the little chambers were six cubits on this side, and six cubits on that side. He measured then the gate from the roof of one little chamber to the roof of another. The breadth was five and twenty cubits, door against door. He made also posts there, three score cubits, even unto the post of the court round about the gate, from the face of the gate of the entrance unto the face of the porch of the inner gate were fifty cubits. And there were narrow windows to the little chambers and to their posts within the gate round about, and likewise to the arches, and windows were round about inward, and upon each post were palm trees. Then brought he me into the outward court, and lo, there were chambers and a pavement made for the court round about. Thirty chambers were upon the pavement. This makes me think when I've read this before, Mama, about the pavement where Jesus was scourged. And it mentions some stairs. And it makes me think about the stairs that still remain in Jerusalem where Caiaphas' palace once stood. But anyway, the pavement by the side of the gates over against the length of the gates was the lower pavement. Then he measured the breadth from the forefront of the lower gate unto the forefront of the inner court without and a hundred cubits eastward and northward, and the gate of the outward court that looked toward the north, he measured of length thereof, and the breadth thereof, and the little chambers thereof were three on this side, and three on that side, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, were after the measure of the first gate. The length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth 
5 and 20 cubits. And their windows and their arches and their palm trees were after the measure of the gate that looketh toward the east. And they went up unto it by seven steps, and the arches thereof were before them. And the gate of the inner court was over against the gate toward the north and toward the east, and he measured from gate to gate an hundred cubits. After that he brought me toward the south. And behold, a gate toward the south, and he measured the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, according to these measures. And there were windows in it, and in the arches thereof round about, like those windows. The length of the length was fifty cubits, and the breadth five and twenty cubits, and there were seven steps to go up to it. The arches thereof were before them. And it had palm trees, one on this side and another on that side, upon the posts thereof. And there was a gate in the inner court toward the south, and he measured from gate to gate toward the south an hundred cubits. And he brought me to the inner court by the south gate, and he measured the south gate according to these measures, and the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, according to these measures, and there were windows in it, and in the arches thereof, round about. It was fifty cubits long and five and twenty cubits broad, and the arches round about were five and twenty cubits long and five cubits broad. The arches thereof were toward the outer court, and palm trees were upon the posts thereof, and the going up to it had eight steps. There's the steps I was talking about. And he brought me to the inner court toward the east, and he measured the gate according to these measures, and the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, were according to these measures. And there were windows therein, and in the arches thereof round about it was fifty cubits long and five and twenty cubits broad. And the arches thereof were toward the outer court, and palm trees were upon the posts thereof, on this side and on that side. And the going up of it had eight steps. And he brought me to the north gate and measured it according to these measures, the little chamber thereof, the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, and the windows to it round about. And the length was fifty cubits, and the breadth five and twenty cubits. And the posts thereof were toward the outer court, and the palm trees were upon the posts thereof, on this side and on that side, and the going up to it had eight steps. And the chambers and the entries thereof were by the posts of the gate, where they washed the burnt offering. And the porch of the gate were two tables on this side and two tables on that side, the slay thereof, the burnt offerings, and the sin offerings, and the trespass offerings. And, uh, and at the side without, as one goeth up to the entry of the north gate, there were two tables. Were two tables. And on the other side, which was at the porch of the gate, were two tables. Four tables were on this side and four tables on that side. By the side of the gate, eight tables, where upon they slew their sacrifices. And the four tables were of hewn stone for a burnt offering, for the burnt offering, of a cubit and a an half long, and a cubit and a an half broad, and one cubit high. Whereupon also they laid the instruments wherewith they slew the burnt offering and the sacrifice. And within were hooks, and hand broad fastened round about, and upon the tables was the flesh of the offering. And without the inner gate were the chambers of the singers, in the inner court, which was at the side of the north gate, and the prospect was toward the south, one at the side of the east gate, having the prospect toward the north. And he said unto me, This chamber, whose prospect is toward the south, is for the priests, the keepers of the charge of the house. The chamber, whose prospect is toward the north, is for the priests, the keeper of the charge of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, among the nations of Levi and the sons of Levi, which come near to the Lord to minister unto him. So he measured the court an hundred cubits long and an hundred cubits broad, four square, and the altar that was before the house. And he brought me to the porch of the house and measured each post of the porch, five cubits on this side and five cubits on that side. And the breadth of the gate was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. The length of the porch was twenty cubits and the breadth eleven cubits. And he brought me to the by the steps whereby they went up to it. And there were pillars by the posts, one on this side and another on that side. So if we ever want to rebuild the temple, which they're actually working on, I'm guessing, for the end times, we got the dimensions. Right? Right, Mama? Let me sing you a song before I go. Do you? 
What song would you like? Would you like me to sing It Is Well With My Soul? Okay. Okay. Gotta just think how it starts. I'm thinking of the last verse. I can't think of the first. Um, the When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul. Last verse. And Lord, haste the day that my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. And the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is There's another song called Be Still My Soul, Mama. And I just told some folks at the nursing home where you once were this past Sunday that once the Lord has settled my heart totally, that I might be able to sing that for you without crying. Because I don't know if my soul, my soul is still. Although I recognize that song's talking about it's like commanding your soul to be still. <laughs> be still my soul, the Lord is on my side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. The other reason why I won't sing is because I don't know the words. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change, he faithful will remain. See, I said, you can't sing it without crying. Be still, my soul, thy best. Thy heavenly friend Through thorny ways Leads to a joyful end You're going to have a joyful end, Mama. You know it. You're going to be okay. You know it. You know it. Going to heaven. That's a good thing. You know it. Can you testify of the fact that Jesus is Lord? It's all right. I know you've done it already in your 
in your youth. The Lord can just help you remember that that's the case. You'll be fine. I mean, you're, you're fine as it is, but this old flesh is failing, huh? Mine is too. So, we don't worry about it. We just carry on until the Lord takes us. All right? Love you, Mama. Mom. Hey. Catch a glimpse. Hi. Love you. <laughs>